Nitin Rakeshna joins us, represents Motila Los Valle MC. He joins us live now. Nitin, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, describe the market environment for us. Are you bullish? Are you bearish? Are you cautious? Uh, good morning, Nikunj. I think uh, you know, it's a million dollar question. Um, you know, the market's obviously done a whole lot in terms of momentum on the downside over the last few weeks. Uh, you know, individual stocks have actually collected far more than the market has. Uh, so I think at this point in time, it's fair to say that we are cautious. Uh, I think there are a few uh, headline and macro issues that still need full resolution. So you know, it's very hard to take a call on and say whether the market's kind of the worst is behind us. It's not. Uh, doesn't look like to be the case at this point in time, at least. And one also needs to know that from a global macro point of view, you know, things don't really look very, very rosy for India at this point. Primarily the the commodity surge and the oil price movement. So I think at best we are looking at, uh, at at markets consolidating in a range, and that's the best case scenario. If anything, I think we still might have a little more downside uh, pressure left uh, because we don't see that conviction coming in from uh, you know the the community, both domestic and foreign, at this point in time. Yeah, then looking at the way the volumes have been drying out day after day, it smells more of uh, disinterest than caution, at least ahead of the budget. Again, I think uh, uh, both of these uh, are, are kind of linked in a way, right? Uh, you will only see volumes pick up when the you know most segments of the market are interested in trading. At this point in time, because there is a fair amount of caution, uh, you know, we're not really seeing that widespread uh, participation from all segments of the market. You know, especially retail investors have really, uh, again, been shocked out of their wits in terms of the way they've seen prices fall. And remember, you know, retails are uh, are more uh, focused on the mid-cap segment. So clearly, you know, that has seen a lot more uh, pain, at least in terms of individual stock segments. Right. Nitin, the last time when we interacted with you on this forum, you were absolutely convinced that it made perfect sense for retail investors and for institutional investors to buy banking stocks. Uh, are you still endorsing that thought? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think uh, you know the banking sector in India is, uh, is in a fairly unprecedented long-term uh, you know, position. Now, now, that doesn't mean that the, the segment will not get impacted when there is an adverse interest rate uh, cycle or a margin issue. I think uh, the last quarter results have shown people that the fears were a little overblown and we've seen a little bit of pullback on the banking side. We still think there is a lot of value left, especially on the PSU banking space. And if you don't have a view of three months or six months and you're willing to wait for three years or five years, I think this is probably one of the best plays. And also keep in mind that as the market recovers, this will probably be one of the first segments to recover. And our view is that, it, that in the longer term time frame, this will definitely outperform the market. What could pull the indices down though, Nitin? I think one has to uh, watch out for two or three things. One, uh, there is a global you know, developed markets trade going on right now. So money is actually moving away from emerging markets and moving into the developed markets. It started with the US and we are clearly seeing that, bo that most US indices are actually at their three, four, five year highs. In fact, NASDAQ 100 is at a seven year high right now. It's broken out of a very, very long term range, to, so to speak. So clearly, uh, you know, that was the first trigger. Off late, we've also seen a fair amount of you know, uh, money moving into the Japanese market because of the merger and acquisition waves and the earnings growth that, that the Japanese corporates are seeing. Uh, so, and clearly, uh, you know, uh, you know, so, so those are, those are a that's a global capital flow trade. Secondly, I think as I said, we need to be wary of, uh, of what happens. I mean, crude's been hovering at about $100 on the, uh, on the Brent side, and that's really more relevant for us. And that does put a lot of pressure on our fiscal deficit, which in turn puts a pressure on the currency and the inflation. So I think it's a fair amount of uh, uncertainty about, about some of the macros. On the positive side, I think the, the corporate sector performance has been fairly good. We continue to see a strong consumption pattern still holding intact despite inflation and interest rate rises. So I think at this point in time, it's really a tug of war going on between micros and macros. And markets need a lot more time to digest all the information that's coming back. Nithin, I want to get you in on the entire ADAG basket and would you rather stay away from, you know, names which still have a lot of sort of clouds ahead of them in terms of the kind of news flow that you're seeing nowadays? Well, I think, uh, uh, you know, we really haven't taken a call based on any specific basket of stocks or based on the ownership patterns, but I think we have more focused on bottom-up plays, uh, either, you know, things that have a strong... Uh, you know, tailwind behind them or, or things that participate in the global value side. So I don't think, you know, we have, we have a view on, on, the, uh, on that basis.
Sure. So when it gets, comes to mid caps, give us some investment bets. I think uh, again there are some interesting uh, value values that have started to emerge. Uh, I mean, obviously we've seen a fair amount of uh, uh, you know beaten down prices in things like infra, and I think the mid cap infra space might just be a good contra play right now. Uh, similarly, I think there are some interesting ideas that have started to emerge, uh, given the fact that globally IT, ha IT uh, you know, spending recovery is fairly sharp. The mid-cap ITs haven't really gotten the same kind of valuation or, or price multiple, so there might be some value available there as well. And one also needs to look at whether there is opportunity on the, on the cement sector, uh, given that we are seeing a fairly good uh, you know, price uh, sustainability on, on the, on the right. pricing front and, and it looks like that we might actually get surprised by that as well. So, Nitin, I'm just going to ask you a trick question. You actively manage funds. In your M50 portfolio, where you track the Nifty, yeah. are you underweight on ADAG group stocks? Are you overweight on ADAG group stocks? Four ADAG group stocks are part of Nifty 50, so I'm sure uh, you have a view there. I don't remember, you know, no offhand. We actually don't, uh, uh, my sense is we actually may be overweight on, on at least a couple of them uh, and underweight on the, on the rest. So I, I don't remember at a basket level whether we are overweight or underweight on, on that basket of stocks. Are you dodging my question? You underweight <laughs> well, on some of them, you overweight on some of them. Yes, <laughs> Yeah, but you know that's the that's the reality because it's a uh, it's not an active basket. It's actually quantitative and rules based. But it's public information. It's available on our website, and you know we can we can easily check that out. All right, Nitin, good to have you on ET now. Thank you for but joining but since us. But we don't uh, pocket stocks, you know, on ownership, right? Fair point. Fair point. Good to have sure. you on the show, sir. Thank Thanks. you for joining.